Hello guys, my name is Mike and I want to show you my way of modeling. For the beginning, for the first video, uh, I want to start from something really uh, easy to build, some simple kit uh, on which I can uh, show you a few simple weathering techniques and few simple tricks to make your model look very very good, weathered and uh, natural. So for the beginning I choose the Mitsubishi A6M3 Zero Fighter from Tamiya in 148 uh, scale uh, and we will make it in uh, this cor color shape uh, from Tai uh, Tanyan Fighter Group Taiwan 1944 I want to apologize you for my English. I didn't use it for a long time. I hope it's good enough uh, that you can understand what I want to show you. I'm sure that I'm gonna have a very good time making this video for you and I hope it's gonna be interesting for you and you will find some nice techniques and nice simple tricks uh, and use in your uh, model build. So let's start it. Okay, so we're starting with the cockpit. Uh, I'm cutting uh, parts from the spruce using the uh, really sharp um, scissors for this. Uh, of, course, of course, you have to clean it uh, from the uh, injection point. So you just cut like that. And after that, I always clean sand a bit to make the, the, the part smooth and with the cockpit it depends how difficult and complicated is it. Uh, you need to uh, decide or you gonna glue it together, all parts together and then paint it or uh, maybe it's so many different colors in the cockpit uh, that you will leave it in, in to, to paint it in the part and uh, in the parts and after that you will paint it uh, glue it together uh, for this uh, case we have um, uh, two two main colors in the cockpit it's blue metallic uh, there will be this parts and i think the, the size of the fuselage and you have some uh, aluminium color, uh, which are these parts. So I decided to prepare them before, cut it, clean it, uh, paint it in uh, in the in the uh, painting uh, stage, uh, and uh, then I will glue it together. Um, the um, Japanese aircraft have some really special. Uh, blue metallic uh, um, color in, inside the cockpit. So I don't have exactly the this uh, this paint. So first I will spray it all uh, aluminum. Uh, this part will be aluminum, so I will let them like uh, like that. And I added some uh, decals from the from the kit. And this part will be after painted uh, in aluminium. I will uh, apply some uh, really um, uh, light uh, layer of uh, um, transparent blue. Okay, so we are in the spray booth. We're painting the parts on the in the aluminium color. So the beginning, you start with this small amount of paint, really light layer. You, you have to uh, give the parts, the, the paint, uh, a bit time to, to dry. You can always dry with the just with the air from the airbrush. And when they are, the first layer is gripped to the, to the part, then you can apply more paint. Okay, so the, the parts are in the aluminum color. Some of them will stay in this color. Uh, but some of them, like this one and the fuselage um, parts, will be uh, painted also with the transparent uh, blue in the next uh, stage of uh, painting. Okay, so I, I put some blue paint here with the rest of the aluminium which left here after painting these parts. 
mix it. I put a, a lot of thinner, so it's I think 80% of thinner and 20% of uh, of the pain. And like you see, it's quite light color. And I will put it with real light layer. Okay, so paint is coming. You see, it's really light and metallic. So I think it's gonna be correct. And small layer, small light layer, dusty coat, just to slowly build the I'm using just the, the air to dry the, the part. So I think it's it's correct color. And very easy way to you don't have to buy a, a special color if you just use it for two or three parts. I don't glue uh, Japanese airplanes all the time, so buying a whole bottle of paint just for one plane is, is not necessary. So you can using simple smart technique you can achieve the same result and so it's looking really really nice the paint is it's dry now so we can apply some details I'm using uh, Tamiya flat black uh, XF1 uh, paint with some small brush and we'll paint the black details by hand Like you can see, the, the details here are not great. It's very simple. Very simple detailing here. But when we, we put the cockpit inside the fuselage, and when we even leave the, the canopy open, you will see really, really small amount of this in inside
and after applying this layer of colors I will protect this parts with the clear varnish I use a simple floor curl varnish and after that we will make some more uh, effects using dry brush technique to put more 3D look to the to the model and we will use also some washes to make the area more dirty like it was I think in the real life Tamiya paint is quite difficult to paint by, by brush and by hand so I, I'm using pushing technique so I, I take a, a bit of paint on the, on the brush I dot it on the uh, middle of the of the part and then I'm just pushing the paint with the with the brush. So now you have good control on the on the paint, just adding few small details in different color, suddenly the the part pop up so it's look completely different more things are going on the on the part okay so that it's done okay so we can glue all the cockpit parts together uh, i'm using uh, mostly i'm using uh, this kind of uh, glue it's tamiya extra thin cement it's very quick it's quite strong so uh, it's much easier to use it and <coughs> To be honest, you can, if you uh, uh, apply it in a good way, uh, you can really uh, glue really big uh, parts, the, the wings or something like that. And uh, for the more grip, uh, it's more, I use this uh, glue, Tamiya cement, the, the regular uh, Tamiya cement. Uh, this glue is based more on the on the resin, so it's dry much much longer, but it's uh, it's it's stronger than than this one, and some parts, <coughs> uh, especially the old uh, kit like Revel monogram from 70s or 80s, the plat the plastic is really really uh, bad and it doesn't want to to glue, so in this case I will use. Mm, the Tamiya cement, the white label, but for this kit, mm, it's also Tamiya, so it could be, it should be okay using mo mostly using this one. But for the pilot seat, I will use this one to grip it more. Because sometimes uh, in the in the future when you will move the the model, uh, the, the the parts can um, separate here, and th th then you have problem with with loose parts in inside your cockpit. And for this, I use Tamiya. Just touch it with with the brussel and the capillary reaction makes the whole job okay i can put some here the steering stick so i can 
the glue first to soft a bit uh, a plastic. Okay. Okay. I. I I always put the the um, steering uh, um, stick for in some small angle. It's make the 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 inside of the cockpit look more uh, dynamic. It's something happen. It's not so boring then. And the instrument panel. So you hear the, the, the click. So it fits really, really nice. Okay. Okay. And the side panel. Okay, so the the cockpit is all together, and now we can spray it on it uh, clear varnish to to protect the paint before the uh, weathering uh, techniques that we gonna use in this uh, kit. Okay, so we will put some clear coat on it. I'm using for this cheap Chinese airbrush to protect the, the better one and it's exactly like with the uh, with the paint first I put some small amount of uh, clear on, on the um, parts and I'm drying them And then I put the, the second one. I will use uh, for weathering this. I will use the enamel washes, so it shouldn't touch the the surface of the acrylic paint. Uh, but I think it's a good idea to, if you can, protect each layer of of uh, paint, each layer of uh, weathering just to be sure that uh, you will not remove the work that you put uh, before into your model. When I start modeling, I, I was protecting every one layer. Every one layer of paint, every one layer of camo, just to be sure that I will not destroy the before uh, the, the the work that I done before. Okay, so now we we will dry brush this cockpit. I'm using not silver or aluminium because sometimes it's just too strong. I'm using uh, medium uh, gray. I put it on the brush remove almost all of the paint I 
then I suck the pain again to feel all the brushes here with the grey paint, gray paint. And whole idea of this technique is that the the paint is almost dry, so almost no paint on it. And then when it's like like here, you take it on onto the model, and with light brushes, you just brush the. the cockpit in this case you see and it's pop up so you can see the small grey changes here as if the cockpit was whether it used it the pilots inside they, uh, uh, they um, destroy the, the, the paint, some aluminium parts are, are going under the paint and like you see before I start very very slowly and now when I uh, know that the, the, uh, there is not uh, a lot of paint on, on the brush I can make it faster and I can push it stronger but no more pain so I re reload the, the pain again dry the brush almost all gone and again slowly gentle from all direction And now I can make it stronger. So, and this technique makes the the surface, the the model more 3D. It's the look of it is more deep. It's not two dimensions, just something more like uh, shadows. It's very very easy, simple. You don't need to be afraid. If you make a mistake, you can all uh, do it reverse, so you can dry brush, uh, dry brush the, the the paint with the, the part with the uh, original paint. For example, here the the black one, or you can or you can paint the the part again. So here the the bottom of the cockpit would be uh, very very warm from the uh, feet of the uh, of the pilots. I need some more paint. Some more paint. I use too much. I touch the the cockpit, the panel, the instrument panel with the side of the brush, so it's loose. Leave some some paint here, 
with cotton bolt I, I can just clean so it. So that's the dry brushing. Really, really simple, easy way of make the parts look more interesting, more realistic. Okay, so the cockpit is uh, dry already. Uh, I added some extra seat belts here, just make it from a simple uh, scratch building from um, masking tape, cut it into the size and paint it. So now, it, uh, now it's time to apply a uh, wash. I will use enamel wash uh, in dark wash, so it's some, it's for me, I think it's the most natural color. It's color of the, of the dust, of the uh, ground. Uh, it's not too dark, it's not too light, it's not black wash because I think uh, in Second World War uh, planes uh, the, the weathering looks more like brown from, from the ground, from the uh, ground airfields. So I think this choice is the best and it's enamel so it's, uh, it will not hurt the um, acrylic paint. Uh, so. I take some wash from the cup, apply it on the surface and the most important thing in this way of doing this is to put the wash even everywhere. So the wash should be on each part of the cockpit, in this case, because we'll do some more things with it. We'll leave it for a couple of minutes to dry. And then we come back here with the uh, enamel thinner to remove a bit of the wash and and play it on, on the part, move it a bit and make some interesting effects. So that's the cut bit done and the size of the fuselage. And it make look a bit terrifying but Believe me, when it's dry, we're gonna remove most of it and the cockpit will look more natural. It's gonna be a bit dirty and it will play a good effect with the um, dry brushing technique, which we done before. This cockpit is really, really small, so you will see nothing here <laughs> when you put the canopy. We'll make this plane with the open canopy, so maybe uh, some of this work will be uh, visible to uh, the viewers. Okay, so the wash dry for about 20 minutes. I have some enamel thinner here and I will re-wet the surface with the wash, with the thinner, sorry. So the wash starts to move again. And I, now I will clean this part from, from wash. So I dry the, the brush here. And then I suck the, the wash by the brush. You can see how it's sucking into the brush. So you have control on this process. You can control how dirty you want to have this part how much wash you want to leave it 
So for example, I add it more thinner now and I can remove even more wash. So this plane is from 1944, uh, so uh, it should be quite dusty and dirty in the <clears throat> the end of the of the Second World War. So we will leave quite a big amount of wash on the part. And I'm doing the same with the cockpit, editing a thinner to re-wet the wash and when the wash is starting to move it, I'm cleaning a bit uh, the part so sit shouldn't be so dirty because pilot sitting here it's he in the, the seat with his clothing but the size of the cockpit should be quite dirty the bottom the floor of the cockpit so uh, I will leave more wash there and how like you can see this is really easy and to be honest quite safe technique because you have full control on on the process so if you want to remove whole wash with a bit of patience I think you can remove all the whole of the wash so it's always a way to come back from this <coughs> stage okay I think I will leave it like that I'm happy with the look of the cockpit it's weathered but it's not too heavy weathered so I think in the next next stage we will uh, glue the fuselage together and maybe we'll try fix the the wings to the to the fuselage so see you in the next part bye guys